Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. Let's have a look at Audio Vector 6X F3 speaker review. I want to review this speaker because I've owned this before and I've heard it a couple places. It's an old model, I think, from around the 90s. So uh, it's basically the, I think it's the only audio vector model that I ever owned. I have heard a lot of other audio vector uh, speakers. Uh, I'm generally not an audio vector fan, but um, I just wanted to do this review since I um, still remember quite a bit from this uh, speaker that I had about 12 years ago. I think I had this about 12 years ago. And uh, let's get into it. So treble, I find it to be a bit underdeveloped, a bit bright and dark at the same time. A very simple do-it-yourself sound from the olden days type of thing. So um, not really special in any way. Uh, Mid-range, again, simple, kind of neglected and woolly, kept a bit in the background, but still at times put a bit forward where it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, it just lacks appeal and, and layers and, 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 you know, gears where you feel like, yeah, you can really push this and, and, and hear a lot of, of, of different types of music. It, it just kind of stays very much the same, uh, very much eh. Um, but <clears throat> when, when you're getting this, it's usually uh, used. Um, doesn't cost a lot, so I get... I kind of get it why you would be getting a thing like this because nowadays you could probably get a speaker like this for only like two, three hundred bucks used. And I think that's fine, you know, um, to find first or second speaker, you know, when you're moving, you know, up in the ranks. And uh, it's fun to, to really unload a lot of power into speakers like this. Um, so uh, yeah, and especially Huma Sekila Stimula, um, that sounded really good on these speakers. Uh, I think it's because of the, the whole Kevlar thing or whatever material that they used. Um, so yeah, that kind of made it shine a bit more. But overall, a really simple speaker, you know, kind of lacking a bit of appeal, just generally switching between, I, I would say especially between genres of music where um, you would listen to stuff that's perhaps a bit more girly, a bit more esoteric, a bit more weird. I just find it that you, when you have a speaker like this, you only listen to like very limited amount of, of music that has a very certain type of style. Um, <clears throat> I could be wrong. Maybe it's just me and, and, and the friends that I had that also owned this. I heard this in... Um, it's I think it's a smaller version of this this version and then I heard a bigger version of it and uh, they all sounded kind of crappy <laughs> to me even back then um, but it, it was just fun you know it's fun to own a speaker where you can just you know put a lot of uh, power into them you know um, I had some musical fidelity I used on this and some Nakamichi gear uh, especially the Nakamichi gear on this was had a nice punishing sound. Um, so especially when I would play Hugh Masekila Stimula, it would just like the the cowbell in that and the drums were were really good in in a, in a sort of punishing way. Um, so that that was cool to experience that almost for the first time. Um, <clears throat> but I would say that a lot of normal music, uh, sissy pop music, um, slightly weird and vague music, stuff with a lot of, you know, finesse and, and micro detail, you just lose a lot of micro detail with the speakers. So, um, and I could already feel it back then when I hadn't even been exposed to really good gear, but let me just get on with it. Um... So the integration between all the units is pretty bad, making you hear holes in the sound, making treble, mid-range and bass just not come together as a whole. And 
But it's, it's speakers like this that makes me understand why so much pretend hi-fi gear exists in the world that is so plingy and highlighted and so overpowered and unnatural and perhaps has a lot of black level. Um, it's because of speakers like this. It, it's kind of a woolly, numb, not fully reactive speaker, but has potential that once in a while you do get to hear a song that kind of favors these uh speakers here um so i get it you know i i heard this thing here from the guy i originally bought it from um and he had what did he have yeah first he has a, had a musical fidelity app that i bought from him <laughs> funny enough but I got to hear it before I took it home. I got to hear it on his Macintosh gear, 1,200 uh, watt monoblocks. And he had some preamplifier. I can't remember what it was, 49, 53 preamp. I can't remember. Uh, also Macintosh. But there I got to hear this very Macintosh-like sound where everything is very flat, cleaned up linear very powerful very controlled almost like half decadent and i mean that in a good way because when you have a speaker like this that is just so bad you kind of don't want to reveal the full truth you know you want to keep sound in that whole bubble of illusion of it actually being better than it really is and i feel that when you do that with gear like like these overpowered Macintosh pass labs um, systems. Um, what was I, was I thinking about? Yeah, audio audio flights and perhaps classy. Uh, it's it's gear like that that really fits gear. The speakers like this, you know, um, because it has a lot more violence, a lot more structure, a lot more clean cuts type of sound. So. I get it. I get it why my people do this. I just wish that back then when I had these speakers that I didn't use gear that was so normal. You know, back then I had really, really bad gear. Uh, so I tested a lot of gear that actually wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say not powerful enough, but this, this, these speakers just needed class of gear that was you know a lot higher much more up there than the actual speakers you know usually i would say have some speakers and then have some proper uh, appropriate level um audio gear on it you know for it to to shine to to be a perfect match but i would say here that you don't want to do that because you will get sometimes a bit too close to the truth and with speakers like this, you don't really want to hear what's the truth. You know, you want to hear what it is sort of a cool, plingy, hi-fi, perhaps masked or very cleaned up type of sound that's kind of opposite of the speakers. So I felt that the opposite sound that I usually don't recommend people uh, create where they have one speaker that's, for example, um, uh, veiled and, and, and dark together with an opposite sounding amp like for, let's just say macintosh where it's a bit more on, on the bright side a bit more flat a bit more about power structure lin linearity you know i think that's a good match here because some speakers are so far away from the optimal sound that you it, i think it's more important to be in that illusion uh, bubble of illusion that than to get close to the truth because i i remember when I started putting gear on this speaker that was, you know, you know, actually pretty good gear, you know, like YBA and, um, oh, I can't even remember it now so long ago, but I just remember it just not responding like it was supposed to do, you know, it, and, and that, that's the thing with these type of speakers, these, these, um, <clears throat> previous models of daily, audio vector b and w and stuff like that with all those speakers that they sold not okay i can't generalize and say all but with a lot of those speakers that they sold back in the 90s there was this veil 
this sort of um, obscurity where if you got too close to the truth putting proper gear on it um, it would not react and and really sound good you know it would many times be a bit vague and hesitant and almost sissy like and uh, yeah it, it's, it just shows you how different the time is back then from when they made speakers around the 90s to to the speakers that we have now the speakers that we have now generally from audio vector daily bmw um, just can't compare them you know they're, they're so much more evolved now compared to to back then back then they sounded a lot more like a simple do-it-yourself um speaker project you know i could i could nowadays find a lot of kits make my own speaker for probably like one fifteenth of the price of what these things costed back then um so we've we've evolved quite a bit we've evolved quite a bit and uh, yeah it's 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 a different generation of speaker just with a very different type of sound well, what what i really don't like from this speaker is i'm not a guy who's into obscurity in in regards to sound i want to feel when i buy a speaker that it is so clear so untainted so focused and it can just do anything and i feel that with these speakers here i felt that there was so much in the way of getting to the actual music that it kind of annoyed me you know and, and and i could clearly remember back then only listening for music for like 10 15 20 maybe even 30 minutes sometimes but i would never listen for hours never 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 and and i just felt that it, it was just so annoying and it was i felt that it was obscurity on so many layers that uh, almost thinking back on it almost gives me a headache because I just know that from having looked inside of the speaker, looking at the units, the cables, the crossover, the um, the speaker terminals, it it's just not that good, you know. It's it's very very normal. Um, even compared to standard, the the standard back then, this wasn't really you know like a super duper um, good speaker. It was an okay speaker. So overall pretty average but yeah I'm, I'm very happy that i got to try it and um it was fun it was fun being younger into more trashy type of mainstream music and then just you know this is one of my first speakers that i had that was you know a, a biggish where i could you know really run a lot of punishing sound through the speaker um it was one of my first big speaker i think it was number two i can't remember but i had a, a do-it-yourself speaker that was very similar to this i think before this or after this i can't remember but um interesting very interesting and it actually got me very interested in um owning macintosh gear <coughs> macintosh monoblocks and preamps you know all that stuff that i usually don't like nowadays but in that zone of obscurity you know you kind of want that fake pretend sound you know and for me fake pretend sound that is um uh, macintosh monoblock system um uh, class a um i can't even remember what they make monoblocks but these big amps from from class a and audio flight and stuff like that you don't want to really hear the better gear out there you know once you get into stuff stuff like aquaphase and the really good uh, Yamaha or stuff like that. It just doesn't match really good. But I could imagine, I could imagine uh, something that I didn't try. A, a Luxman. They're usually a bit more thin, transparent about the, the spacing in, in the sound. I think that that could have been a very good match. And perhaps also some audio um audio audio uh, research i can't remember now what it's called but that would have been interesting to also have tried that so so yeah 
Very interesting sound, especially when you put it on some Macintosh and you heard something like Leonard Cohen on it and um, Hugh Masekela Stimula. Um, <clears throat> sounded very good, but just regular music on this seemed, seemed very dull and uninteresting, you know? It just became... It just sounded more like gear than actual music. So um, I think that's some, some very interesting things to, to, to keep in consideration. And, and what I wrote here was um, you want to kind of steer the, the sound, you know, put a lot of power behind it. And um, where it's more about the magic trick in front of the crowd instead of how the magic trick is being done um and and a bit of a shocker <clears throat> was that back then i had some um some custom made oyed srbn banana plugs uh, with with some some cable that a friend made for me and that changed the sound quite a bit so it actually became a lot more digestible and gave it more of a substance uh, gave it more priority. I also removed these things, you know. These things are horrible. The, these metal things. Um, absolutely horrible. And you can see the cable that he's got. The guy who has this speaker here. You can see the cable that he has here. It's basically hardware store cable here. And I can imagine that looking inside. Um, I did once look inside of it. Um, and I saw some cable that wasn't really that good uh, matching this uh, type of cable. So I can imagine that a lot of that mold, a lot of that hole, uh, those holes in the sound, uncertainty, obscurity, it comes from binding posts, uh, connectors, the binding posts themselves, and the cables. So if you ever get a speaker like this, I would suggest uh, renovating it, you know, just giving it some proper cable. You don't need super fancy cable but just some proper cable um and so and perhaps change those binding posts to something more like cardas um binding posts i think that would would help the sound a lot so um yeah that that's my review of this uh the speaker that i owned and um like and subscribe if you can bye